hi welcome to my channel i moved to london about a year and a half ago and i love living here but there are cons that go with the pros so i'll be discussing them with you all today whether you're planning to move to london or just visiting as a tourist this video is for you let's start with the pros and less things to do there's so many restaurants theaters museums and attractions like new york city there's also shops parks, festivals, and events going on all the time. So if you're someone who likes to go out and do things, you'll never run out of things to do. Tons of history and famous locations. If you're someone who's into history, you'll really enjoy London. There are some classic London sightseeing places like the Buckingham Palace and the Tower Bridge. Even if you don't go to a museum or a particular place, you'll find historical sites all over the city when you walk around. Public transportation. You can go anywhere in London with public transportation, so you don't really need a car. The famous underground where the tube is an efficient way to get around London with trains running frequently and connecting to almost every part of the city. The bus network is also extensive and buses run throughout the day and night, making it easy to get around even outside of regular business hours. Besides the tube and bus, there's also trams, river buses, and cable car. The city also has a bike sharing scheme called Santander Cycles, which allows riders to rent a bike for a small fee. You can use a mobile payment system such as Apple Pay or Google Pay to pay for public transport in London, which is super convenient. In fact, London buses no longer accept cash for fares, so make sure to have a prepaid ticket or use your mobile payment system if you're visiting London. Overall, London's public transportation is comprehensive and efficient, making it easy for visitors and residents to get around the city. Cultural diversity. I've met people from all around the world in London, Korea, India, France, Germany, you name it. This means there's a wealth of cultural experiences to be had, from food to music to art. I've had some of the best Indian food in London, and there's an extensive range of international cuisine, including Japanese, Mexican, and many more. As someone who lived in Korea and different parts of the United States before moving here, I find it interesting to be surrounded by people from different backgrounds. Many free museums and galleries. Although London is known for being very expensive, there's also tons of museums and galleries that are free. This is due in part to a policy implemented by the government to make art and culture accessible to all. Some of the most famous free museums in London include the National Gallery, British Museum, and Victoria and Albert Museum, just to name a few. There's also many smaller museums and galleries in London that are free, including the Science Museum and the Imperial War Museum. This shows the city's commitment to making art and culture accessible for all. Loads of green space. Some of the most famous green spaces in London include the Hyde Park, Regent's Park, Hampstead Heath, and Richmond Park, which is one of the largest urban parks in the world. In addition to these larger parks, there are also many smaller community parks and gardens throughout the city. They're all great if you want to go for a walk, jog, or on a picnic with friends and family. Various neighborhoods. Shoreditch has a hipster vibe where you'll find trendy restaurants and hotels. In Notting Hill, you'll be able to find antiques to vintage fashion in the Portobello Road Market. There's also Canary Wharf, a leading financial center located in East London, known for its modern feel with tall buildings, shopping centers, and restaurants. As of 2023, Canary Wharf has 5 out of the top 10 tallest buildings in the UK. There's so many different options where you can live or visit depending on your preferences. Easy to travel to nearby European countries. You can easily visit nearby European countries like Paris, Brussels, and Amsterdam by taking the Eurostar train. In fact, I'm currently filming this video in a hotel room in Paris. I hopped on the train from London to Paris to explore for two and a half days. It only took little over two hours by Eurostar. The train journey is fast and efficient, making a convenient alternative to flying. And there's also many direct flights to numerous cities in Europe. Education. London is home to many excellent educational institutions, including some of the world's top universities and schools. The city has a diverse educational landscape with options for students of all ages and backgrounds. At the primary and secondary levels, there are many public and private schools throughout the city that offer high quality education. Some of the most prestigious schools in London include Eton College, Westminster School, St. Paul's Schools, among many others. The public school system in London is also very highly regarded, with many outstanding state-funded schools. 
At the university level, London is home to several world-class institutions like Imperial College, attracting students from all over the world. In addition to traditional academic institutions, London also has many vocational and technical colleges that offer training in fields such as nursing, engineering, and hospitality. Overall, London's educational landscape is diverse and dynamic, with options for students at all levels, whether you're a local or an international student. Now let's take a look at the cons. Tubes can get crowded and no mobile signals. Tubes can get very crowded during rush hours and it can get stuffy too. Depending on which tube line you take, there might be no mobile signal which can be very inconvenient when you're trying to use Google Maps to figure out where to get off or trying to text a friend. Cost of living. As you probably already know, London is expensive. Rent, utilities, eating out, transportation, they're all expensive. When I take the subway back and forth for work, it costs me 6.2 pounds, which is about $7.62 and it adds up. Salary. This can be a pro or a con depending on where you're coming from, but it was a con for me. I noticed that the salaries in the UK are a lot lower than the US. But if you compare it to the rest of the UK, salaries in London are usually higher than other parts of the UK. Although this can be offset by high cost of housing, food, and transportation in the city. I just wanted to quickly note that I understand it's hard to directly compare salaries because there are so many factors that go into this, such as exchange rates, healthcare benefits, taxes, etc. Additionally, salaries can vary significantly across industries, job roles, and regions. However, I'm just speaking from my personal experience. I moved from the United States where software engineers have an average salary of $122,668. But in the United Kingdom, software engineers make an average salary of £48,723, which is about $60,000 in US dollars. But I get 28 paid vacation days and a good work-life balance, so I'm satisfied overall. Weather. The weather in London is unpredictable. It can be rainy at any time of the year, and there are many days when it's cloudy and rainy. While the summers are great, winters are long, windy, and cold. I've seen snow my entire life, so I don't really miss the snow. But if you're someone who loves snow, it rarely snows in London. Crowdedness. London is a very crowded city with a population of over 8 million people. This means that traffic can be heavy, public transportation can be overcrowded, and it can be difficult to find quiet, peaceful spaces. So there you have it, the pros and cons of living in London. Overall, London is a great city with lots of excitement, history, and culture. If you haven't been to London yet, I definitely recommend visiting. Whether it's the right city for you depends on your personal priorities and preferences. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe for more London videos. Bye!